Hi everyone, and welcome to Low Season Traveller Insider Guides. I'm your host, Jed Brown, founder of Low Season Traveller, and this week we've been speaking with Greg Karen, the President and CEO of the Philadelphia Convention and Visitors Bureau, to learn more about the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection. In the first episode, we gained valuable insights into Philadelphia during the low season months, and today we go a little deeper into the cultural heritage of Philadelphia, as well as getting some of Greg's top tips and tricks to make the most out of your trip to this vibrant city. I hope you enjoy the podcast and would like to wish all of our friends in the US a peaceful and happy Thanksgiving Day, wherever you are. Enjoy. Let's move on now to um, a, a subject which is close to our hearts. We, we, you know, we always talk at Low Season Traveller about, um, about cultural heritage. Um, cultural heritage is, is, is important to us because a lot of the travellers um, that travel during the low seasons they um, they want to engage on a deeper level with that destination, mm-hmm. and they want to understand the cultural heritage. And um, you know, the cultural heritage, whether it's something tangible like a building, or whether it's intangible like a food or music or songs, um, that element of culture. Um, the beauty of it is, it's there all year round. You know, you, you don't need to go there when the sun is shining to to engage with that cultural heritage. So tell us a little bit from a cultural heritage standpoint, what is it that makes Philadelphia unique in this regard? Sure. So you're at, Jed, you're absolutely right. First of all, heritage and culture don't go away. They don't close for any season. They're here. <laughs> they are here year round. And what's what's unique here is that, as I, as I said, we are one of the top five cities in, in the country, but you still got this beautiful blend. And as I talked before about the navigation and the, the ease of which to get to the places you want to explore or dine or, or, or tour. Um, but it's also a very open and diverse community, very welcoming spirit. Again, there's, there is um, you know, an old catchphrase for Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, which has been modernized over the years. Uh, and then one of our former mayors picked up on it, I think from a radio DJ a few years ago, and the, it was uh, adapted to be the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection. So that, um, you know, all brothers and sisters are welcome, but it's, yeah. it is that, that feeling that you're not going to be turned away, uh, no matter what, that you're going to be engaged and have a conversation and pick up on local stories that you just can't find anywhere else. And making people feel at home and a part of the community is, is, is really critical to Philadelphians, um, as, as people come to visit us. Um, so I mentioned before, you know, not being the city of canyons and these neighborhoods to embrace you. I'll give you a few examples. You know, there's, mm. there's a great area of Philadelphia in South Philadelphia called the Italian market. Um, it's, it's a historic, one of the oldest outdoor produce markets in the country. Um, and also a very rich history of our Italian community. Mm. Um, a lot of Italian immigrants came in through the, the turn of the last couple of centuries. And, um, you'll find some of the best Italian, what we call here, red gravy, uh, you might call sauce or tomato sauce or, yeah, yeah. or whatever you put on your on your pasta as we yeah. would say in the uk but pasta here um homemade sausages uh there's another neighborhood called fish town uh which uh is the epicenter of our artistic and culinary and live music scene um nice. there's an area called university city uh which is called that for obvious reason there are three uh well-known universities all within just a few blocks of each other uh the university of pennsylvania which is of course part of our ivy league here in the U.S., yep. uh, Drexel University and the University of the Sciences, where a lot of our life science uh, students come out and, and go into uh, health and life sciences. Um, and there's also a great, because of the university, university um, community, you've got great attractions in the area, great anthropology and archaeology museums, and again, some great music and, um, uh, and food scenes in University City. Um, it it does it's it sounds it, it sounds so in in so many ways it does sound very very similar to to Manchester, everything that you know that you're sort of talking about it it as in, um with it being you know very much a university sort of city being very walkable and compact, um everybody you know being generally being very welcoming and friendly, it, you know we spoke about it a little bit off air before but it. I mean, it, it is uncanny. It, it, if they're not twinned with each other, they really should be by the sounds of it. <laughs> well, you're absolutely right. I mean, we, we joked about it earlier that, you know, that, uh, I, I do think that Philadelphia is to New York City as uh, Manchester is to London. Yeah. And there is just so much about, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the, the sort of the, the, the grit and determination of a city and, and being sort of a growing up as a working class community that really mm-hmm. has embraced 
culture and arts and, and um, you know, things that might be seen as more um, highbrow, but in a way that is, is still just done down to earth. It's really, really yeah. a, a neat combination. Done in an unpretentious kind of way. Um, I That's like right. That. I That's like right. That. No offense to our Londoners listening. No, absolutely in, not. Absolutely not. No, 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 not at all. But it's just, you know, it's just different. Um, tell us, does, does um, Philadelphia have, um, does it have a music scene? Because obviously Manchester, uh, you know, we, we, we had our, uh, we have quite a good sort of music scene. Um, are we similar in that way as well? Is there, is there quite a music scene in Philadelphia? Very, very much so. I mean, we've we had some of the greats like John Coltrane uh, come out of Philadelphia. Uh, soul music would not have, been what it became in the U.S. and around the world if it weren't for Gamble and Huff, yeah. uh, and Philadelphia International Records. You know, the, the one of the, the early labels here for when 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 vinyl was big the first time around. It's and now it's coming back as something that's hip and, and and contemporary again. We've also got some other great homegrown talent like Hall and Oates and Teddy Pendergrass and the Roots, who are the the band that actually play uh, behind uh, Jimmy Fallon on yeah. the Tonight Show now. But but just a, a great great jazz. Uh, group and then famous musicians rappers turned actors like will smith uh, who grew up here in philadelphia the area and schooly d and, and a bunch of others that you know could probably go on for a long list and for the highbrow uh we also do on do don't want to miss we've got one of the most le- legendary uh orchestras here the philadelphia orchestra is not just well renowned and don't just play in one of the most beautiful venues in the world but the philadelphia orchestra uh, travels all over the world uh you know throughout china europe uh, south america and for over a hundred years, the Philadelphia Orchestra has been one of the most acclaimed orchestras in the world um, and really just attracting people all over. Um, it, it, it's a phenomenal experience. And if you've not done it because you've just, it, it's not in your DNA, coming to Philadelphia would be an excuse to go to the orchestra for the first time. It, oh, it really, really would be an experience that you would, you would go home and, and recall and talk about uh, for years to come. I love that. I love that. What a great, um, what a, what a great shout out. Um, let's move on to, uh, uh, to food, uh, which is a subject uh, always, always close to my heart, Greg, um, if I'm being very honest. Um, what's Philadelphia like in terms of, you know, cuisine, uh, dining out? What, uh, what does Philadelphia offer? It's, it's become such an extraordinary foodie town uh, yeah. with a recognized restaurateurs and award-winning chefs. There are over 1,500 restaurants and outdoor cafes uh, within the, that downtown district that I mentioned, that one and a half by two kilometers, yeah. uh, making it very easy to find something no matter what you're looking for, whatever specialty you're looking for. But there are a few recommendations for visitors that, that have uh, both history and cuisine and, and, and contemporary all sort of blended in. Uh, one is a great place called McGillan's Old Ale House. Uh, it's the oldest continuously operating tavern in Philadelphia. Oh, wow. Um, it, it's a real cozy little stop for a beer and a bite. You know, just not dissimilar to the pubs. I think the Brits would feel well yep. at home here um, yep. to, to, to grab a, a bite and a pint. Um, yep. And um, temperature might be a little different. You're likely to get a, a cold ale here. Um, but <laughs> You have a better chance but, there than you would here. <laughs> But, but circling back again to the to low season traveler, uh, you know, again, during our holiday season, um, they're decked out with a thousand feet of garland, 3000 Christmas lights, uh, 150 wow. red bows and over 200 ornaments all jammed into this great little owl house um, all over the bar and around the pub. And it really serves uh, to be a special treat around the holiday season. Again, that's going to be memorable and uniquely Philadelphia. So that's, that's one favorite. I love favorite. it. An, another one that again for for is a family favorite for us is a restaurant called Park, spelled yep. P-A-R-C, uh, and it's an institution for uh, for us here, and it's right on Rittenhouse Square, which is another really beautiful, upscale yet artsy dining district. Um, some of the, the best you know condominiums and homes and flats are you know are, are around Rittenhouse, um, and they've got both indoor and outdoor dining. It's just a really neat place uh, to get almost any meal or a cocktail before going somewhere else for a dinner or going somewhere for a show. Uh, the third and my personal favorite is, again, I'll go back to the <laughs> that Manchester, Philadelphia grit connection we've yeah. been talking about, is again, one of the most historic places in, in Philadelphia is called the Reading Terminal Market. Mm-hmm. And, and as the name implies, Reading Terminal, that portion of it is because it was the central terminus of all of the regional trains that, you know, going back hundreds of years in the, oh, the greater Philadelphia region. So all the whether it was uh, vendors or workers or whatever that would come into philadelphia back in the 18 and early 1900s um would, would come in and and, and the trains would come in from all over the region to this terminal and it's a beautiful 
arced building um, uh, at some points where you can actually see some of the history that's connected to our to our convention center and our Marriott. So that's actually a, a great photo spot. Yeah. But the terminal market itself is, as the name implies, and it's it's, it's not unlike you know, some of the markets and, and old rail terminals in the UK that have been converted for um, food vendors and craftsmen and farmers markets. And uh, there are actually more than 80 merchants selling fresh meats and cheeses and baked goods and confections from around the region. Um, there is, uh, we'll talk some of the specialty foods of Philadelphia. And again, a very high brow. One is called, of course, the Philadelphia cheesesteak. And we may talk about that more than once. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's, uh, there, there's some great cheesesteaks in Reading Terminal. Uh, and another classic uh, by Dinix, uh, that's D-I-N-I-C apostrophe S, Dinix yep. roast pork sandwich. Oh, yeah. um, it's it's to die for. It, it, it really is. Um, and then just Pennsylvania Dutch, I may have mentioned, or the Amish, uh, who actually, you know, heavily populated region just about 30 miles uh, west of the city of Philadelphia, uh, all have a, a huge number of stands for these you know, great homemade, home-baked, home-brewed um, uh, specialties that are just really unique to our region. The, the the Philly cheesesteak is is one of these things which you know it's iconic. Everybody has heard <laughs> of, of of you know the Philly uh, cheesesteak. Um, I'm going to say I've never had Philly cheesesteak. What exactly is a Philly <laughs> cheesesteak? <laughs> well, first of all, when you when you when you've booked yourself and plan to get your Philly cheesesteak, you actually have to plan to meet your cardiologist the next day. Oh really? Um, it's one of those, is it? It's, it's, it, it <laughs> Which means it's going to taste good, Greg. It's going to taste. It's going to taste great. It's going to be grand. That's, there's no question, Jed. You're going to. Yeah. You wouldn't eat one every day or for multiple meals yeah, a day, but for a it's, treat, it's definitely something. So, so to give you the details of a Philly cheesesteak prepared properly, yeah. uh, it is very, very thinly sliced uh, uh, chopped beef, mm -hmm. um, grilled on a grill and served with melted cheese on a long, fresh baked roll. Um, it's become an art form in Philadelphia cheesesteak stops around the region. Um, I even point out if you're, if you're not a beef eater, you know, a purist would say, Greg, don't say what you're about to say, <laughs> but there are places that do offer chicken and cheesesteaks where they'll use fresh chicken and grill it up and make it the same way. Again, if any of my Philadelphia brethren are listening, I might get a stone <laughs> through the window at any moment, but the, the classic, the classic cheesesteak is, um, that sliced grilled cheese, uh, with or without some fried onions on it. And, uh, again, you got to think about what kind of cheese you want because that's also a religious experience to choose uh, either what's more of a liquefied cheese or or a, oh. a sliced cheese to to top it off. Oh, nice. um, but you 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 may find it elsewhere, but it's not the same experience. Yeah. Um, some of our other unique delicacies are the soft pretzel. Uh, again, anybody who's been through uh, uh, Germany or some of the you know the other European cities that are great for baked pretzels and things, the Philadelphia pretzel is is unique to the country. Um, Again, as a New York native, I'll point out, New York has its pretzels. Um, when you buy a New York pretzel, you need to book a dentist shortly after. <laughs> really? <laughs> um, they, they tend to be a little bit more stone-like. But Philadelphia, they're just, they, they literally melt in your hand and melt in your mouth. Oh, yeah. Um, and if, if, you, if you get them fresh from one of the great pretzel bakeries, uh, uh, again, you get some neat mustards at that, that Reading Terminal Market. You're really going to enjoy it that much more. Um, some of the other delicacies, again, I mentioned that roast pork sir, uh, sandwich. Uh, which is a classic Italian sandwich of roast pork with bitter greens, which are sort of broccoli rob and, and spinach. Um, and it, those who are a little bit daring get what's called an extra long hot pepper um, you know, stuck right in the middle of that sandwich. And um, if, if you if you like the heat when you, you bite into something, um, that's the way to do it. It will warm you up in the winter. It will warm you up and clear yeah. your sinuses at the same time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Love it. Um, so, I mean, look, that's, um, I mean, look, that, that sounds absolutely, um, absolutely awesome. My, my mouth is actually slightly watering now. Um, I probably, I probably should have had some lunch because now I'm really, um, I'm really craving cheese and beef, <laughs> bizarrely. Um, so I'll have to, um, I'll have to sort that out. We're, I'm, I'm really conscious of, of time, uh, Greg, um, events. Uh, and experiences in the low season. So a lot of a lot of destinations, um, you know, during the low season months, they have you know fairs or festivals or other kind of stuff. Philadelphia, you you have your sort of share of of that sort of the activity during the low season months as well. Without question, again, some things that you just you you can't do anywhere else but Philadelphia. In the way that we do them in Philadelphia and uniquely done during that season that that is our low season. So first and foremost is the Mummers parade uh which is done on new year's day every year 
Uh, it's a Philadelphia tradition that goes back uh, a good century or better part thereof. Uh, and local Philadelphians are associated with what are called mummer brigades. Uh, and these brigades, the brigade is just basically the, their word for what are local clubs, their mummers clubs. Mm -hmm. And they, it, it, you could find it on YouTube just to get the experience, but again, nothing like being in the midst of it. And uh, these brigades will dress in the most beautiful, colorful costumes, uh, not dissimilar to what you might see in, uh, in New Orleans or, or in Paris, just made of feathers and, and, and glitter. And these, these costumes can weigh literally 50 to 75 uh, pounds uh, wow. that the, these these brigades are dancing in. And, and there are actually even different types of brigades. There are fancy brigades, which are very, very elaborate, very high, high intensity, what they do to prepare. And then there are the, the comic brigades, which are, as they sound, they're a little bit more silly and goofy and you know, mm -hmm. provide entertainment. But um, to stand within feet of this as, as they strut along Broad Street, uh, which is our main, you know, right off City Hall, as I mentioned, yeah. uh, doing dances and skits and celebrating the new year, um, it is, it's, it just, it's one of a kind. Uh, it is absolutely one of a kind. Uh, one of the other major things that occurs in Philadelphia that occurs elsewhere, but Philadelphia has one of the most historic uh, flower and horticultural shows in the world. Uh, it's put on by the uh, Pennsylvania Horticultural Society mm -hmm. based right here in Philadelphia. Again, it occurs in our convention center, which is right in the middle of everything. So, uh, and that occurs late February, early March every year. So if you're here for that um, sort of trail end of, of the winter, a, it's again a great way to spend a couple of hours and what's really unique about it is they they create a new theme every year it could be monte carlo or it could be um it could be anything yeah. um and all of these displays that sometimes span um you know 30 40 50 60 meters long in archways and um and, and decor that's all made out of living uh, um, foliage uh, and the most colorful displays it's it's, it's a photo opportunity of and to itself um, it's actually that our convention center, as I mentioned, is right next to the Reading Market. So you can actually, you know, do do the flower show and then run over and get your cheesesteak and maybe go back and see what you may have missed. Easy. Um, and, and there are even a lot of things related to horticulture that if people are, you know, thoroughly into it, there are seminars and classes and yeah. displays and, and, you know, how to do floral arranging. It's very, very unique. And of course, uh, like a lot of other major markets, we have an annual international auto show that, you know, folks coming from the UK certainly can go to auto shows uh, in the UK. Um, but I do think, you know, an auto show is, is as much its destination and it would be a little bit more of a uniquely American experience. You'd certainly get the international brands. Um, but uh, the way we do auto shows here is unique. Uh, and that's again, typically in February in a good way to maybe because they have evening hours often, um, oh, maybe spend it, get, a, get an early dinner after turning around and then just walk around in the heated comfort of, of, you know, the auto show kind yeah. of a neat thing to do as well. Very cool. I would love to do that. And uh, beyond that, there's, there's uh, I mentioned a number of holiday related things as well. You know, our, our, our Thanksgiving Day Parade, which again, Fritz might see that as a day of rebellion. Um, I, think, I think we've gotten over those sores from uh, <laughs> the early, mid 1700s. Yeah. Um, but we have a beautiful Thanksgiving Day Parade, which is, has some of those mummer elements, but it's still in the US, you know, classically done with these big, well done floats that all have different themes and uh, kids and, and singers and dancers all on the floats. Um, there's, a, again, uniquely Philadelphia, there's a store that is now a Macy's affiliate, but it was originally called Wanamaker's, which was one of our most historic, kind of a, a Harrods-like department yep. store. Got it. Um, in fact, if you've ever seen the movie Mannequin, um, yes. with a yes, beautiful actress who ended up on Sex in the City years later. Is that um, it? Is that where it was? That's where it was filmed. It's one of the most unique, beautiful department stores in the Americas and has built into it these massive pipe organs. And they do light shows and organ shows uh, throughout the entire holiday season that, again, place to warm up, Holiday Village inside Love the store. You, you can do your shopping or not, but it's, it's just some experience. And when those pipe organs start to play um, holiday tunes, it, 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 it really, I'm getting a little bit of a chill, right? You're getting yeah. hungry and I'm getting the chills. I'm starting to feel Christmassy. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Christmas to you in case I forget yeah. to tell you, Jed. <laughs> So all these things and fireworks shows over the river, um, it, it, we really, really have very, very special ways to celebrate the holidays. And, and being a visitor here during that time is, is something that you'll really take back with you that, again, that, that low season to me is a high season unto itself. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. You, um, I know um, from uh, doing, the, again, the, the research that, you know, you, you kind of have these sort of pop-up, you have pop-up bars as well um, during, the, during the holiday season. 
and um, and like sort of you know pop up sort of rooftop bars with fire pits and and all of that. I mean that just sounds so cozy and Christmassy and. I just want to get a mulled wine and sit around a, a, an open fire somewhere in Philly and, and just chill out with some locals. Um, it just yeah, sounds I, amazing. I, I think it's part of sort of an international um, sort of movement or activity. I think there are a uh, hundred bars in, in six cities, one of which of course is Philadelphia, as, as you kindly mentioned. So that when you, you step into these things, of course, you have to realize that they're, they're, they're done up and dressed up and, and engaging, but they're only engaging for a matter of maybe weeks or months. So yeah. it's something that, that is, is there just for you and, yeah. and would not be there at other times of the year. And of course, tying it into the holiday themes, there's a lot of you know, festival aspects of it um, in, in, in South Philadelphia, where I mentioned that um, uh, the, 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 uh, the market earlier, the Italian market, uh, there's one that's called In the Valley uh, that is all decked out with holiday decor, garland, lights, ribbons, um, holiday soundtracks, and, and cocktails with catchy names that, you know, again, you wouldn't find anywhere else or at any other time of the year. Um, one other one, just so I don't forget, called Tinsel, uh, which is mm -hmm. right in Center City, uh, located at uh, 12th and Chestnut Street. Mm -hmm. And you literally will find yourself immersed in tinsel and colorful lights and holiday cheer and mm -hmm. hot and cold drinks. Um, it, it really is. That's, that's a little bit more at the front end of the low season, uh, starting in October and going on for a little bit after that. Um, yeah, those the, the pop-ups um, are, are just pretty cool experience. The irony is that, that this time of the year right now, actually on, 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 on any other time is the, the perfect time to go to Philadelphia. Um, That's right. Absolutely, absolutely love it. Um, again, I'm conscious of time, so forgive me for, for sort of slightly um, rushing here. Um, top three experiences during the low season. You're the, you're the, the, the main man. Give us your top three that, that you would recommend top three um i, I know think it's hard to choose three <laughs> it is i again we, we spoke of one of them a little bit before you know the, the the christmas village uh that we have both in love park uh and and there's a a holiday market that european style market that spills over to dilworth park they're they're literally just a block apart from each other so love park where the love statue is yeah. dilworth park is the the plaza in front of our historic city hall those holiday markets Again, there's just things you're going to find there and people you're going to find there and food experiences and hot drinks and toddies and things that are just going to make that a very, very special part of your trip. To me, it's the kind of thing when I've been in various parts of the world during the holidays, it's the kind of thing I'll probably go back to almost every night because you'll, when you're done with your touring for the day and you, you, you've, you've gotten your, your evening meal, it's just so exuberating and lit up and exciting to just walk around and you see different things at different times. So I, I would make sure to hit the Christmas village and, and the holiday market. Um, like a lot of places, and again, depending on, on exchange rates and appetites for finding bargains, uh, we actually are year round in uh, not just uh, Philadelphia, but the state of Pennsylvania is tax free shopping on clothing and shoes, uh, ah. which is uh, does not exist everywhere in the states, uh, certainly does not exist in New York or DC or, or other parts of the Northeast. So the price on the tag is the price you're going to pay. It's not, and it's not like a VAT where you're, you're going to pay it and have to go get it back and drop an envelope at the airport on your way out of town. It is what it is. And it's, again, it's, it's, it's a benefit of being a local too. So that when we go shopping uh, and buy, you know, things for the family, I mean, jewelry is taxed, but, but you, whether you're buying a belt, shoes or, or, or a new dress, um, all tax free and some, some great unique boutiques beyond just the, um, the department stores. That's, that's and, really, that's really huge. Sorry, Greg, that, that was really huge. Cause I, I, I didn't realize that at all. Do we do as travelers, do we need to bring any, you know, passport with us or anything else in order to sort of get that? Or is that just, as I say, no, it's, it's, it's not even uh, for, for tourists. It's, it's for everybody. Oh, it's for, so that for everyone. when you, when you, it's, it's for everybody, whether you live here or not, if you're visiting from another state in the United States or from the UK or Asia, it's just the policy. We don't have a sales tax that relates to it's it's it goes back years it's kind of a philosophy of the state that, that clothing is a necessity just like food um so maybe certain luxury items i think literally maybe if you get to first stoles or something that yeah. they, they may tax those as a luxury item yeah. but pretty much anything that you're buying in a, in a store that you're going to wear um is tax free uh, and in fact our neighboring state delaware they have no sales tax whatsoever so even people from pennsylvania will go to delaware to buy a big screen television because yeah. you might spend a thousand dollars on a TV and pay no tax on it whatsoever. Wow. Um, so it, it really is a very, very special Good part deal. of being in Philadelphia to, yeah. again, you're in the UK, you could add what 15 or 18% on the cost of an item, right? <laughs> the rest. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. So, so great bargains to be had. And the last one, I'll just say real quickly, again, that mural arts tour that I mentioned at the outset of the conversation yeah. and there are mural arts walking tours 
their Amura Arts motor coach tours and train tours. Um, so that regardless of the weather, you can go out and experience it with a docent. And they literally, they're, the tours on the train will tell a love story of Philadelphia that you're not getting off the train, you're gonna be at an elevated train level and see some of these beautiful murals that are you know, taking up massive sides of buildings or billboards and, and just get a Philadelphia specific story that you're not gonna get anywhere else. It's called the, the Love Letter Train Tour is what I'm talking about. People can look that up online uh, yeah. and, and see what that's about as well. I love that. Greg, I think we are just about there for time. Um, I think before we go, um, you know, look, it's been just fascinating hearing so much of what you've got to say. And if the listeners are anything like me, and I'm sure they are, they're desperate to get on a flight and, um, and get over to, to see you guys and some, to spend some time with you guys. Um, before you go, um, do you have any sort of special insider tips or um, tricks um, or anything else that any of our listeners could uh, benefit from or should know before we go? I think the ones we spoke about, again, just thinking about your, 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 your overarching travel plans and experience, the, yeah. the flights that we have coming in from the UK and really from around the world, it's absolutely worth looking at both the time, the experience of coming through the airport and the fare, the airfares themselves. Yeah. And just the travel to get international, to go travel overseas can be the most exacerbating part about it. And if you can reduce your cost, reduce your blood pressure, and arrive in such a way that you really feel like you've arrived and you're not you know, going through you know, a, a massive brigade just to, to start your touring. Um, I think that's, that's something that people should not miss. And I think they should not miss, again, thinking about us as sort of the, the hub in the greater Northeast region of the United States. And again, think about that travel distance, whether you wanna go up to New York for a day or even an overnight and maybe leave some of your stuff behind and check it with the Bellman uh, here at your yeah. Philadelphia hotel. And, go for a quick night to New York or a quick night to DC. But this is really where you want to experience um, uh, the birthplace of America yeah. and that historical district we spoke about and, and you know, where the country began. And there's just so much uh, rich in culture that you'll find great history throughout our country, but this is, this is where it all started. I love it, I love it. Greg, it's been an absolute delight speaking to you. Really, really enjoyed learning all about Philadelphia. Um, so thank you so much for, for joining us on the podcast. Hugely appreciated, Jed. and I'm desperate to get over and see you guys now. Cheesesteak, cheesesteaks and pretzels are on me, and the cardiologist is on you when you get home. <laughs> Done deal. <laughs> Greg, thank you so much. Have a great day. Cheers, Jade. Bye-bye. And that's our show for this week. Our thanks again to Greg for sharing his insights with us this week, and you can learn more about Philly in the low season months by visiting the Philadelphia page on lowseasontraveler.com and of course on the visitphilly.com website too. Join us next week as Kate is very much on home soil as she brings us to the far north of tropical Queensland in Australia. Should be a really good episode. If you haven't already done so, please do like and follow at Low Season Traveller on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn and Twitter to see all of our latest content, interviews, features, competitions and much more besides. Thanks as always for your company. Have a great week. Stay healthy, stay safe, keep your travel dreams alive and don't forget to share this podcast with your friends, family and social networks. And finally, remember that now more than ever, travel is better without the crowds. 